Hello everyone, today we're going to be getting our introduction into logarithms. And really logs are just the inverse of exponential functions, so they kind of undo each other, which makes sense that they can be sort of written in the other's form. So logs have three parts. Their base, the exponent, and the argument, which written as a exponential, we have the base, the exponent, and the argument, which we usually call the result or the answer with um, with exponentials. So we read this as log base b of y. Log base b of y. If we don't have something written there for the base, it's understood that it's base 10. Just as if we had a square root, there's no little 2 as the index, it's understood as a 2. So just another viewing of, you know, going from an exponential to a logarithm. We have our number, which is our base, going to the base of the logarithm. We have our exponent of the exponential, is the result in the logarithm. And then our argument slash answer for the exponential and logarithm. It is very important and it's going to help you tons, especially when we talk about in the next section where there are these weird properties with logarithms. Logs are exponents. It's really what they are. If you have a log, it is an exponent. And it kind of goes with the idea that, you know, it's the inverse of the exponential. So sometimes, particularly when we get stuck, it's good to be able to rewrite between a log and an expo exponential. So we have our base, we have our exponent, and we have our argument. When these are all numbers and it's an expression that makes sense to us, it becomes very easy. So just doing a couple practice problems where we can kind of anticipate what we're looking at is good for us. So we have our base, we have our exponent, and we have our argument. In this example, we do not see a base. It is understood when there is no base here that we are talking about 10. So 10 is my base, negative 2 is my exponent, my argument slash result is 1 over 100. 10 to the negative second, we square it, put our answer in the denominator, 1 over 100. To evaluate these guys means that we, if it helps, we write it in the exponential form, and then we're going to find the power of our base that gives you our argument. So in this first example, we have 3 to what power is 81? Three to the fourth is eighty-one. Three times three times three, twenty-seven times another three gets us that eighty-one. So when we're evaluating, we're kind of finding x though there's no written x there for us. Similar idea here, four to what power is equal to two? Well here we went smaller. So if we go smaller, we know we're gonna have a fractional exponent because we're talking some sort of root. In this case, is the square root of 4, so I know my answer is going to be 1 half. And the last thing I want to talk about, even though we are not going to be graphing the logarithmic functions, I did find it important to help sort of contextualize two properties of logs that are going to be true for us, and it kind of makes more sense when you look at the graph. Um, so one thing is that our base can not be zero and cannot be negative. So our base has to be greater than zero. Here we see we have what the logarithmic function looks like when base is greater than one. Here it is when we have a fraction zero, between zero and one. The reason we can't have a base that's zero uh, is because zero to 
any power is still going to be zero, so we're not going to have this curve. We're not going to have this graph that looks like a logarithm. And another property that's important is the fact that this x also can't be a negative. So this argument, we need to make sure that that is also, which is part of our domain, but it's the idea that, you know, if I had a base of 2, there's no exponent of 2 that's going to give me a negative 3. So if ever we're given a logarithm where our base is 0 or negative, or our argument is a 0 or negative, that's undefined. It's not possible. Um, yes, we can take powers of negative numbers, but it's not going to give us this continuous curve that a logarithmic function graph is known for. So again, we're not going to be graphing these, but I felt like it could kind of help contextualize the fact that the base and the argument cannot be 0 or it cannot be negative. So that's all. I'll see you in class.